After having spent more than two decades in the high-tech security system industry, author Larry Kelly, who graduated from the University of California at Santa Barbara, saw his life change by 9-11 when he realized we were at war and wondered what ordinary citizens could do to help defeat the attackers. In his tenure as a political commentary writer, Larry Kelly has had featured articles in numerous papers, including two of his articles featured on the cover of Town Hall magazine. We all know about the fall of the Roman Empire and the British Empire, and today much of the world is asking, will the American Empire do the same? Will history repeat itself again, or have we learned our lessons? Larry brings some perspective to this question in his book titled Lessons from Fallen Civilizations. Can a bankrupt America survive the current Islamic threat? Daniel, I was one of those Americans whose life was forever changed by 9-11. Having spent the entire day watching the planes full of passengers explode into those buildings and the towers collapsing. And I was remember being especially haunted by those who chose to leap from 100 floors up rather than be incinerated. I remember driving to work the following day and wondering, who are the people who plotted the murder of thousands of innocent Americans? Why did they want to kill us? How many follow-on attacks will there be? Could this be the start of World War III? How do we win? And moreover, I wondered, what can I do? The, the book is the result of a 10-year odyssey to answer those questions. Well, Thucydides was a fellow who wrote the history of the Peloponnesian War. And in his history, he makes the Athenian people his tragic hero. He was a loyal Athenian. And he saw that the tragic hero, they, the, the Athenians were composed of greatness as well as tragic flaws. And so I am following his lead in a number of different themes that he developed, one of which is my main character is Western civilization. And I take you from the birth, essentially, of Western civilization on the plain of Marathon in 490 BC, all the way up to the current war with radical militant Islam. Well, Daniel, there are books warning of the advance of radical Islam what I call resurgent militant Islam. Others that warn of the dangers we face as the US fast approaches the fiscal cliff, as I call it. Mine is the only book which connects the two. Again, I'm channeling Thucydides. From him, we get the expression, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. But this wasn't exactly his position. He saw that there are certain principles that continuously govern the affairs of men because human nature doesn't change that much over time. In studying and describing the fall of great civilizations, the Greek polis, Carthage, Rome, Byzantium, and the Ottoman empires, I develop a list of 10 principles that contribute to the fall of great civilizations. I call them my immutables. And they also can be seen to repeat because human nature does not change very much over such a short period of time as the last few millennia. Disturbingly, Danielle, the leadership of our imperiled American empire is violating all too many. I refer to America as the empire of the willing, by the way and jokingly say that the list of 10 immutables, given some rewording, are actually Obama's to-do list. My immutable number three reads, appeasement of a ruthless outside power always invites aggression. Treaties made with ruthless despots are always fruitless and dangerous. Now, witness the fact that our president thinks he can negotiate with the Iranian regime, which has been continuously killing Americans since the attacks on our embassy and our Marine barracks in Lebanon in 1983, killing Americans throughout the Afghan and Iraq wars, 
and was even a conspirator in 9-11. This regime is hell-bent on getting nuclear, wep on nuclear weapons and has never even renounced its uh, desire to destroy Israel. So it is a, a very good example of how a, an immutable principle that could be seen all the way back in the time of Thucydides in ancient Greece is still in play now. No, what I'm saying is uh, I quote Bernard Lewis. Bernard Lewis is the professor emeritus, if you will, of Middle Muslim studies, Middle Eastern studies. He's been advisors to uh, an advisor to four or five presidents. Can read ancient Arabic, has does studies, you know, in Constantinople, reading ancient Arabic texts and so forth. Written 30 books on the subject. And here's how he puts it, Daniel. He said, while not all Muslims are terrorists, nearly all terrorists are Muslim. Uh, since 9-11, just to put this in perspective, there have been over 20,000 attacks by Muslims around the world over the last 13 years. I portray in historic fiction format the two moments in history when my hero, Western civilization, very nearly dies. These are two battles. The first is the Battle of Poitiers in 732, led by the Frankish warlord Charles Martel. And the other battle is of Vienna in 1683, led by the Polish king Jan Sobieski. In both, if the soldiers of Allah had won, the whole of Europe would have been subsumed and the advance of Western Judeo-Christendom would have ended. Islam is derived from a pitiless warrior desert culture which lived by the ethos of the raid. The culture for which the raison d'etre, the reason for being, was to plunder its neighboring clans, camps. It is also derived from the example of the prophet who participated in 35 battles, 33 of which were offensive. Muhammad was a ruthless warlord. A Muslim is taught from childhood that there can be no judgment of the prophet's most perfect life. On the contrary, his life is the standard, the model by which all others are judged. They don't need more uh, reasons for Islamic aggression. The concept of jihad is developed throughout the 14 centuries that Islam has existed, and it is uh, a tenet of the religion that they have every right to make war on the unbeliever. But they also, in in their in their religious uh, ideology, believe that a, a woman is definitely subservient to the man. And there are now very prominent women that I profile in the book, such as Ayan Hirsi Ali, who have left the religion and speak out. And I think that more and more women around the world, if given the opportunity, the sanctuary, if you will, will renounce Islam and serve to cause it to need to reform. One of the most recurring themes that I found in studying the, the fall of great civilizations is that they run out of money. What happens is their leadership, such as the, in the fall of the Roman Empire in the West, which occurs in 476 AD, essentially taxes the middle class to the point where they become impoverished and their ability to, to continue to tax the, the, that civilization evaporates because the middle class collapses and so too does the ability to finance military operations. Call it comparative history. There are 
in in the in the world of uh, political commentary, I think comparative history is really the the highest form of political commentary because if I tell you that I think that Obama is doing a terrible job in negotiating with the Iranians, you as my reader, Danielle, have the right to say, well, based on what? So my answer to that is based on historic precedent. Uh, I think that history, while it is not a perfect guide for the future, it's the only navigation aid we have. I have many in the book, but the first thing that we need to do is to uh, make sure that we do not bankrupt this next generation. So the size of government, the non-military budget must be brought under control. We must also become in energy independent. I have a number of different prescriptions that are being talked about now coming up in the 2014 and 2016 elections. We need to build out our missile defense, of course. That should have never been halted. That should have been a, that should have been almost a, uh, a crash program to make sure that the system is completely built out and that our ally and that it protects us and our allies. But in my reading of history, the, the, the most important thing is we must not become uh, financially insolvent. Well, I think we 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 just discussed that in the previous question, Daniel. I think it's uh, first understanding that all civilizations fail, but they fail for specific reasons. And as a matter of fact, they fail for specific reasons that can often be seen to repeat. So understanding history is important if you're going if if you want to preserve this empire. I call it the empire of the willing. For the next hundred years or so, we have to change course. We are, we are headed. We are definitely in a state of decline now, Daniel. The easiest way to find the book is to go to LarryKelly.com, L-A-R-R-Y-K-E-L-L-E-Y.com, and you will see the book on the front page. There's an order from Amazon there. You click on the order from Amazon button, it takes you right to the Amazon page. Uh, you can see reviews you can all there's also a look inside you'll be able to read a chapter or two and it's three or four steps on amazon we, we have by the way uh, the kindle version paperback and hardbound ladies and gentlemen whether you look at our disappearing influence in the middle east our loss of iraq and afghanistan the debacle in syria the muslim brotherhood jihad taken over egypt yemen and tunisia and iran's fearless rush to possess nuclear weapons or you consider that one out of seven americans are not on food stamps most thinking americans cannot escape the fact that america is indeed in decline we are necessarily asking why is this happening this book tells readers why five great Western civilizations failed, what that means to us, and what we can do about it. It is a fascinating read and a must read indeed for all of us who care about not letting history repeat itself over and over again. The title again is Lessons from Fallen Civilizations Can a Bankrupt America Survive the Current Islamic Threat?